Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started today, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for the missing piece of the puzzle to grow your business? Well, I want to invite you to watch my free online training on how I went from hobbyist to celebrity wedding planner and how you can do it too. You will discover the puzzle pieces that will absolutely transform your business from hobbyist to like, hell yeah, I can do this full time. On puzzle piece one, I'm going to go all into personality. Puzzle piece two, how to keep the high quality clients happy. Puzzle piece three, I'm going to talk about what separates the good from the great. On four best kept secrets to profitability and all about implementing the strategies. And five, If you're going to attract the best, come on, people, you got to be the best. And then I'm going to show you how to create the magic and put it all together for you and your clients. So don't wait another minute. Go on over to go.angelaprofit.com. That's G-O dot Angela Profit, two F's and two T's dot com. And watch my free videos and download my free workbooks that will take your business to the next level. Today, I'm super excited to talk with Brittany Dry, who is the founder, editor, and chief of Love, Inc. magazine. Brittany, welcome. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited for our followers and listeners to learn more about you and how you got into the industry and what Love, Inc magazine does and what you focus on because I think it's awesome. (laughs) Um, So before we jump in for our listeners who don't know what you do, tell us about your background and how did you get into the wedding industry? So I've always been in the editorial lifestyle space. Um, I went to school actually for interior design and journalism. So after college, I moved to New York and worked in um, print publications, um, mostly like in the the interior design space. So El Decor was my first job out of college. And then this was pre, you know, I'm, I'm, mid thirties. So this was definitely like pre-digital media age. And, um, when I saw that print publications were just folding left and right, um, and this whole like new world of digital media was booming. Um, I had an opportunity to move to that space, uh, and worked at a lifestyle website as the assistant editor and just kind of grew from there. I started taking on freelance clients. Fast forward a couple of years. Um, I had a couple of like wedding focused freelance clients. And I realized that the wedding space was just very heteronormative. Um, The content out there was targeting a bride marrying a groom um, in the inspiration, in the language that was used from both like publications and wedding pros alike. And I just saw a void, Um, you know, and then there was also some really fantastic like LGBTQ focused publications and blogs, but Um, No one was really just being truly inclusive with their content. And I realized like, well, when you separate it, it implies that it's different, which kind of defeats this whole like purpose of equality. Like why it's, it's not a gay wedding. It's just a wedding. Right. So I, you know, I saw this void and I was like, you know what? Like I can feel that. Like I, um, you know, I'm well-versed in the industry. I knew the community. I, I know what, you know, they're looking for. I know that, you know, it, it's, it's not a gay wedding, it's just a wedding, but there are certain nuances that come with same sex weddings and LGBTQ weddings. And I know those. And I'm, and so I decided to fill that void and created love Inc magazine. Um, so we're a digital publication that, um, we, 
do a blog you know, every day. Um, and then we push out a digital issue twice a year. And actually we just launched our V6 issue, um, which I'm super like proud of. Yay. And we're actually, this is the first time we're doing print on demand. So as a print, you know, I started my career in print and it's kind of, you know, coming full circle. Um, I, I've always been a print girl. I love the <laughs> tangible magazines, like call me old school, but, um, so I'm really proud that we've gotten to the point where we can offer a print on demand service for our readers because our readers have been asking for it and, um, now we're able to do it. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my story. (laughs) That is awesome. Well, and I'll say like, um, you know, just in doing all types of weddings and, um, I mean, I was raised like you treat everyone the same. Um, my family had a wedding venue and my dad, who's like Mr. Macho man, like shooting guns and stuff. His brother, his, his baby brother, um, was super creative and loved to make dresses and make flowers and make cakes. And I think he like did my parents whole wedding, like almost 40 years ago. And, um, you know, so he ended up opening a family wedding venue and was very well respected in that community. But back then it wasn't cool to say, Oh, I'm gay or, Oh, I, you know, this is my partner. People were very hush hush about it, but I grew up around that and I hated it because he was so awesome and everyone in the community loved him. But if you attached a label, um, then it was just a really negative thing. And working in, um, I I came from the healthcare mental health background and a lot of our patients, they were, they felt so depressed because they couldn't really be who they were. And so once um, I got into the wedding industry, or I would say back into the wedding industry, since I grew up around it, I was just so thankful that I'm like living in a time where there is equality. And I'm very thankful for that because all I care about is happiness and whatever drives your happiness. I don't care if you're dogs or aliens, <laughs> like I will help you plan your wedding. You know, if you're truly happy um, and you're not killing anybody, you know, it's like, let's have fun and let's do this. And you're right. It's just a wedding. And the yeah. fact that people have to call around and um, ask like, do you do same sex weddings? I'm like, what? I mean, of course, like I do Catholic weddings and Jewish weddings and Yemen weddings and Mm -hmm. Christian weddings. And uh, what do you mean? And that like people literally say to me, well, we've talked to people that won't do that. But now there's people like you who, you know, saw that void and you took the leadership opportunity and you saw the change and you're like, we're going to create a vendor guide and we're going to make it fun and easy and less stressful, which is amazing. Like, yeah. thank you. <laughs> and, and the thing is, um, you know, people, they still like, you know, in certain areas of the country, they're still very much having to ask that question. I mean, in 29 states, people can still legally discriminate against a couple based on their sexual orientation and identity. And, um, you know, it's, it's the big number one concern of same sex couples is they feel like they have to come out to every vendor, you know, Oh, we'd love for you to shoot our wedding. Like, are you okay that I'm marrying another girl? And, um, it's, I mean, because we also feature hetero weddings, of course, and, I confirm, like we literally confirm with every single wedding pro featured on our pages if they're equality minded, because I would never want to feature the work of a floral designer or photographer who isn't open to working with all couples. Because I mean, I'm putting, you know, like I'm, I'm giving the inspiration to my readers. I want that inspiration to be up, you know, be available to all my readers. So getting those confirmations, like not everyone is. And you, I mean, I've had a venue in Manhattan not be equality minded. I've had San Francisco wow. photographers and um, floral designers in Los Angeles, like major, major cities that you just assume are very progressive. And, you know, obviously like 99% of, of wedding pros in those major cities are, but then, you know, yeah. also like the rest of the country, like, especially in this time, like, I feel like we're kind of taking 
you know, we took two steps forward and one step back. Mm -hmm. Um, in the last two years, like we had such momentum with marriage equality across the States. And now since 2016, you know, we're just seeing a lot of hate, um, in society and a lot of negativity and a lot of, uh, you know, flashback at, at, you know, people being supportive of, of the community and, um, people thinking that it's okay to, to fuel hate. And, um, so it's still very much an issue. And, um, I'm, I'm just happy that I'm able to, you know, provide a resource for readers who, you know, they don't even have to think about it. It's everyone featured on my site. They know from the get-go that that person is equality minded and that person would love to work with them. So um, That's awesome. I, just, I just love that I can provide that resource. Yeah. Do you have like a, a pre-qualification um, you know, form or process on your website where, you know, you ask people like, are you equality minded or how it help us understand, like, how do you, how do I go about it? That? Yeah. <laughs> We so I found that when you have to write it out, you're it's it's so much easier to just say like to click a button and lie. Yeah. Uh, so we have we get like email confirmation. We physically like manually email every single wedding pro and have to receive that. Yes, I love working with same sex couples or no, and don't like you know no. It's I I'm extremely religious and it doesn't fall within my religious they'll have their reasons, of course, but writing it out, like it's much harder to just, it's much harder to lie when you write something out. Um, and so like for me, I think like having someone just like click a button and saying, yes, I work with same sex couples just to get featured. Like it's, it's the process, like manually typing it out is much, you get much more honest feedback. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, like, I mean, it's knock on wood, it's never happened, but yeah. um, we've never featured someone who said that they were and then ended up, you know, not being. Um, so, uh, you know, of course, if someone like saw a photographer, like worked with a photographer, you know, recommended on our site and came back to me and said, you know, this person actually isn't equality minded, I would, you know, I would address that, but it hasn't happened. So. I mean, which is great. It's almost like, like as an outsider looking in, something that I see that tells me about your company is you do an awesome job, like letting people know who you are, what the company is, what it stands for. And there's so many companies that we work with and do consulting with, and we ask them and we interview consumers, like, what do you think this company does? And who's your target market and who's your target audience. And so kudos to you to like making sure that you're putting it out there consistently that this is what we're standing for. This is what we're doing. And it's almost like people, it sounds to me like don't really approach you to get featured if, because it's like they know if, Hey, if I'm not, if I don't believe in equality and I'm not living that, that I'm not going to be part of it. We're not the site for them. Yeah. If right. it's not, if it's not important to them, then I mean, there's so many pu- other publications that they can find inspiration on or, or get featured on, you know, whomever it may be, whether it's a couple or, um, or a wedding pro. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're very like, I mean, that's our mission statement and we talk about it all the time and, and we market ourselves that way. Um, and to me, I mean, that kind of what, is what says us apart from other publications is that we just, we kind of have this like socio-political stance along with like pretty wedding inspiration. So, mm-hmm. and I found, you know, especially this, you know, the millennial generation and the Gen Z generations, they, they want to kind of have that emotional attachment to something. It's not just about the pretty it's do the companies that they give their money to, do they match the same values that they hold? Um, are they, giving back to the communities? Are they, are they making a difference in the world? Um, they want to spend their dollars, um, with places that are talented. Yes. But also, you know, they, there's a connection that's deeper than that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you guys have so many amazing, like things that you, I was looking at your Instagram and your, um, social media and Pinterest and everything this morning. I'm like, these are amazing, like engagements and weddings and, Oh my gosh, like just the stories, you know, you feel the connection, like the way that the stories are shared and written and it's just, it's awesome. Um, I mean, I would say like 
the next question I have is like, what is really special and unique? I feel like we've already talked about like what's really unique about what you offer um, and like what you guys stand for. And so my next question to you is what, how do people reach out to you and how do you get featured? And if you'll talk us through or is it the couples sending you photos? Is it planners, photographers? And if you'll sh- just explain your process to us. So we have a very like streamlined process. Um, we have to, we just, we get so many submissions that we just have to keep it, you know, in order. Um, we always like working with a photographer directly because it is, you know, it is their property. The images are their property. So we have to, no matter what, like we always have to get permission from the photographer to use their, use and share their images. Um, but we get submissions namely through photographers or planners. Um, sometimes the occasional like floral designer or event designer will send, um, send our way, uh, through our submissions link. We use, um, submittable, and then we're also on Matchology, which um, if you don't know Matchology, it's a fantastic um, submissions platform that um, I was actually, full disclosure, I, I was part of IELTS Society, which created Matchology. Yeah. And, um, uh, so I, you know, having had a hand in creating it, um, I obviously love it, but it's just, it streamlined the process. It has an algorithm that matches your event with all the different publishers in our system. So, um, it really like the success rate of, of acceptance is, is much higher than your like standard, um, submissions. That's but, awesome. So we have our own like submittable platform for direct to publication, um, submissions. And then we use that. We're on Matchology. So if you're on Matchology, like you can find us there. Um, and then also we have, you know, I get a lot of, um, emails and Instagram DMS from couples, um, just sharing like, Oh, we, we got married last Saturday. Like we're so excited. Here's our photos. And I, I love that. It makes me like to think that I'm even on their, like, you know, you're supposed to be on your honeymoon. Like, why are you even <laughs> to even like know that I'm in their mind at this time is just truly special to me. And I love that they want to share their celebration and excitement, yeah. like the post wedding excitement. Um, so I love the DMs, but I'm just like, you know, I can't base an editorial decision based on like a couple of photos on DMs. So I always tell them, oh, like, I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. Like we'd love to, you know, consider your wedding for publication. If you're up for sharing, um, you know, please have your photographer. I'll send them the link. Please have your photographer s- submit via this link. And then we, you know, and then we have a process, my submissions editor. Um, you know, we have our editorial calendar. She, uh, decides like which ones, um, to move forward with based on, you know, the content, the photography, uh, quality. Um, we are a little different than most publications because we do focus on the love story. Um, okay. Though not every wedding that we feature has to have a ton of details. Like, of course, that's like important for Pinterest. Um, but I found like our readers, like the posts that do best on on in traffic and in um, on Instagram are the ones that like have the love story with it. So and this, you know, or like emotional photography. So like details are always like good, but we definitely don't shy away from, you know, less detailed weddings or elopements, um, that don't have, you know, a ton of floral or a ton of decor, um, just because we do love the love story so much. And we do focus on that and our readers, like they connect with that. So, um, it's fun that, cause that's what I love the most. Um, so it's good that my readers kind of reflect that. Yeah, because I was going to ask, like, um, you know, for some of our listeners who are newer in business, who, um, you know, they've never been published before. And I would say just in my experience of doing this and being in this industry almost 20 years, number one, like every publication is different. They all have their own guidelines. They all Mm -hmm. look for different things. And number two, it is ever changing. (laughs) And so, yeah. I remember when, and I don't even know if, if you use this, I remember years ago when Two Bright Lights came out and mm-hmm. the photographers were like all sending, like putting their photos up there 
And um, I liked it because it created, it just made it easier. And um, I don't really, like, I don't plan weddings and events, like, to get published. Like, that, none of this stuff existed whenever I first started doing it. I mean, the bottom line is, I do it because I love people. I love events. I love making people happy. That That's what drives me as a business person. But there are some people out there. I actually had a client one time tell me that she interviewed. I think I was like the fifth planner that she interviewed. And she ended up hiring us. And she's like, I interviewed this one girl. And she told me that she only takes weddings that are published are are worthy of being published. And she, her goal (laughs) is to get everything published. And I'm like, what the F? Like, that's uh, that's really sad. (laughs) And I'm like, you're in the wrong business lady. Yeah. I was just, I was like kind of shocked. And it's like, in fact, for us, I would say now it's like 50, 50, like some of our clients, like they don't even want cell phones there because they want people to live in the moment. We have an unplugged complete ceremony reception. And then the photographer, it's funny because girls are like, I want everything private. And then they get their pictures back and they're like, well, okay. Like maybe let's put a few things on Pinterest. And I'm like, it's only if you want to. And it just inspires other people to share your ideas and your creativity. It's not a bad thing, but Mm -hmm. you, I mean, it's in our contract now. Like we have to ask, like, do you want this? Do you not? And quite frankly, like we only, uh, we work with the photographers to make sure that if they want to be published, but typically they're, the couples are asking us, um, and for the people who have never been published, like a couple of things, like if you'll tell them the importance as to why it needs to be planner photographer submitting. Um, and then, yeah, let's just start with that. Cause I feel like yeah. that's really important. So we prefer planner photographer just because the photographer, a, like it's their images and then the planner is the one who has all the information because we're, we're sticklers for crediting everyone involved. So um, I need a, I need to have, be in communication with the planners so that we know, you know, who the floral designer was, who the linens were from, the rentals, like all of that, makeup artists, who, whatever, you know, whoever was involved, we want to make sure that they receive credit, like both in the blog post and in any social that we do. So it's always like very key to have those two like wedding pros involved in the submissions process. Um, just so we can get the information and all the images that we need. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. I mean, we'll never like not accept something just because the floral designer, if they have the information, um, great, but we do like, we do have to have permission yeah. from the photographer to use the images. So at some point, like, you know, we need to be in communication with them regardless Yeah. And I guess if you'll share some nuggets with us, like what is the best way just in general, would you say to get published? If, if there's a new planner or new photographer listening, like what are your recommendations? So my first recommendation is always like, just get to know the blogs um, and get to know the different publications and don't write off a lot. Like one, one thing that I am always hearing is like, oh, I didn't get on Stummy Pretty or, oh, I didn't get on Junebug Weddings. Who else is there? And there, I mean, there is literally like so many publications that are fantastic, beautiful, um, niche focused. And people just think of these like top five and then they just give up. Um, because obviously they're, those are giant publications. Like they're getting a hundred submissions a day, if not more. So, you know, kind of expand yourself, keep, you know, keep an open mind, um, get to know other publications that may not be the top five, but they have like really good traffic or they're, you know, targeting your, your customer that you want, your client that you want. So look at your regional publication. Regionals are booming right now, like local blogs, regional blogs. Those are booming right now because they're so like, rich in SEO. Um, when someone Googles, you know, Virginia wedding planner, Tidewater and Tool is, is one of the first things that come up, um, which is a local Virginia blog. Um, and as she's a dear friend of mine, like she produces gorgeous content. Uh, so just really, you know, 
don't always go after the top five big blogs because there's so many more out there um, and get to know them, get to know, you know, what they share, what they look for, look through, you know, their, their blog post and their Instagram post and kind of see like what style they do. Um, there's so many like blogs that have niches. So like for me, um, our niche is equality minded weddings. Um, other niches can be, there's, um, pretty pair bride who focuses on plus size couples. Um, there's, uh, mountainside bride, which focuses on mountain weddings. So that can be Rocky mountain weddings. That could be Appalachian mountain weddings. Um, there's just, there's budget savvy bride. So if there's a more budget focused wedding and it's under, you know, 25,000, that's a great source. So just, I mean, there's so many fantastic pubs that I think, you know, people don't, don't even try to learn about. So yeah. that would be my number one tip of advice. Um, is just to really like kind of see because your your publication or your your event can fit a number of different publications. You can go like if you have you know a gay wedding in Colorado and it was under twenty five thousand dollars. Those are three publications that you could get on. Yeah, yeah. For for people who don't understand or they're they're just not familiar yet with there's publications that do exclusivity and then there's other publications where you can submit it to a hundred places. So yes. and I know that you guys are an exclusive publication. So if you will share with us what does that exactly mean? Yeah. So um, again, there's no like consistency across publications. We all kind of have our different level of exclusivity. So for us, um, we do require that the event is, um, you can, as a planner or photographer, you can absolutely like blog it on your site or share it on your Instagram. We have no problem with that. Um, we just don't want any other publication. So we don't want it to have like an editorial placement anywhere else before we publish it. Um, and we do require that editorial exclusivity for two months post publication. So once you submit it, um, we'll let you know, like if it's been approved, if it has, we'll tell you the publication date. And then two months from that publication date, you can start submitting it elsewhere to non-exclusive blogs. And can you tell us why and what the, like the pros of why you do it that way? <laughs> yeah. So uh, for me, I like to share content. I like to have unique content um, and I like to share content that hasn't been seen already. So um, I mean, everyone, you know, kind of has their own priorities. Every publisher has their own priorities. And for me, that is, that is a, a high priority. Um, if, I mean, I will, I have made some exceptions <laughs> for like really fantastic <laughs> weddings yeah. or stuff shoots if it's like okay I gotta feature this this is just too gorgeous to pass up on but I really try to provide my readers with unique content um that hasn't been seen but you know it's it's a giant world wide web so like it's not the end of the world if I feature something that's already been placed elsewhere um I just like I just like to try to keep it as unique as possible yeah, I love that. And, you know, for some people, when I ask them that question, again, like you you have, you know, brand new green people that are listening. They're like, why do people do that? Like, that's so stupid. I, I've literally had an intern say that to me. And I'm like, no, actually, as a business owner, and when you're trying to drive a certain level of what you do and you're trying to brand yourself, it's very important that your readers and followers know that what they see on your blog, I mean, whatever, it's not going to be seen anywhere else for a while. And that keeps your, your people loyal and it keeps them coming back. And so it's just funny to me where people, they don't know what they don't know. And then they assume like, that's so dumb. And I'm like, no, actually it's a very strategic move as a business owner and people who do that, it's like they do it for a reason. And like, I love your reason of wanting to be unique and wanting to be special. And your readers know that. And that's how you grow a, a very, very loyal following. I mean, would you say, I would say that your people are pretty loyal. <laughs> they are. And we, you know, they, they stay around. They find us when they're planning their wedding and they, they just stick around because, I mean, we, we focus so much on the love stories and it just makes people happy. So they just, you know, they keep coming back to us. And I've actually tried to include some like family content and family lifestyle content into um, 
into loving because that is something that I eventually want to expand like yeah. completely into. I've, I've kind of touched upon it um, because that's a whole other space that I think needs the whole equality minded makeover. I think family wise, like uh-huh. every all content's targeting a mom um, who's usually married to a man. And uh, I think there's a lot to be said for, you know, same sex families um, and a lot of content to be made for them. So that's definitely like an area that I want to eventually grow into. Um, we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but we're, you yeah. know, creating, you know, creating content for that. And it's just, you know, you keep a reader because with weddings, like the turnover time, you have a reader for 18 months, you know, mm-hmm. on average. So it's, you know, you have to keep them coming back <laughs> or you have to try yeah. at least. <laughs> Yeah. And just in looking at like some of your blogs and stuff, I see like Elliot's first birthday and like the cake and that's my daughter. Um, yeah. Yes, <laughs> and like the cucumber mint cocktail. And so I love mm-hmm. that you're sprinkling in, um, you know, that lifestyle stuff, because again, I definitely think just like you said, after people get married and then, then if they start a family and it's like, oh, well, let's just go over to loving to Brittany because she's sharing this too. And I love that. It's so awesome. Thank you. It's And like the closet cleaning tips, like, oh my God, I love that. Like, is that your closet? It's so freaking organized. (laughs) I wish. No. (laughs) It's like closet spring cleansing tips that will get your ass in gear. It's, I love it. It's, (laughs) I love, um, that, that you love like the lifestyle stuff. So what would you say, like the top challenge today are we facing as business owners and what you're seeing? I mean, it sounds like we're a lot alike where if there's something new coming out, we learn it, we adapt, we change, and we're, we're the leaders of like taking that jump and that risk to stay relevant. But what would you say as a business owner right now with technology and new platforms, what is the biggest challenge for you as an online publication? So the biggest challenge, I mean, the algorithms, you know, I'm sure you, you have seen, like the algorithms are always changing and you have to constantly adapt. Yeah. Like the way I actually like read a marketing article recently that was saying um, how, you know, as quote unquote, like influencers, like we're trying, we're sharing products with our readers and and doing it in like beautiful, like lifestyle photography or, or whatever it may be. And that works for millennials, but Gen Z, which is the younger generation after millennials, they view themselves as the same level as celebrities and influencers and brands. So to me, that tells me peer-to-peer marketing is is the next big wave. And so all we're putting all this effort into the influencer marketing, and it's not going to make a difference <laughs> for this next wave of readers that we're going to have in a few years. Yeah. And so it's like... Well, hell, like <laughs> trying to figure out. So I'm try. I'm actually trying a few different things. Um, the a lot of you know, I don't want to say like kids these days, but kids these days, as I but shake, that's what it is. As I shake my cane, uh, kids these days, <laughs> they have their like what they call faux Instagram. So they have their pretty Instagram that is you know kind of they share with like just the general public or or it's you know, it's private, but anyone can really like follow it. Um, but then they have their, their real Instagram, which is just their friends. It's, it's private. They only like, they don't post just pretty pictures. They don't care about the grid. It's just truly what social media is supposed to be about. Um, so I actually did that. I'm doing that. I just started. Uh, so I have my faux Instagram account, which is love Inc. Mag. That is, that's the pretty, that's the grid. That's, you know, the content that is on Love Inc. And on my stories, I'm sharing, you know, behind the scenes, but it's still very professional. It's still very, you know, branded. Uh, Whereas I started a new quote unquote personal account as the editor of Love Inc. And it's private. And I invite my readers to, you know, hey, like request a follow because I'm, you know, I'm, saying yes to readers, but I want to keep it private. So it has that intimate feeling. Yeah. And, um, like I literally just started it like not even a week ago. Uh Um, How's it going? (laughs) Great. Oh my gosh. I have had such amazing conversations with readers, with photographers whom I, you know, we follow each other, but like we've never interacted. 
and other than like a like on Instagram posts. And so it has just been, it's been fantastic. I've loved it. And I love being able to come like connect with my readers on that intimate level. And I mean, I'm sharing like, you know, my cat. Yeah. Thanksgiving. I'm sharing like pictures of my turkey. I'm, you know, getting real, like real life. (laughs) It's just like, there's nothing pretty about it. The grid, I'm, I, instead of doing like pictures on a grid, I do like one big picture that's broken up. I don't know if you've seen how people do that where it's like one big picture across like six. Yeah. So I put like, I change it every other day and it's like always like a funny meme or something like that. (laughs) Just like what I'm feeling and just to kind of like make it different um, because I don't care about the grid. I don't like, I don't care about the grid. I don't care what it looks like. It's very Insta story focused. So I'm talking, you know, with my readers, not at them. Mm -hmm. Um, It's, it's been really refreshing. That's awesome. I feel like with social media, you know, especially like in the wedding space, like I recognize that people are there for the pretty and they're there for the love stories. They don't, not all of my followers want to see my face with no makeup on at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, (laughs) I get that, but you know, some people do want to connect and they want to have that relationship. Um, they want to know the, the person behind the brand. And so having this outlet, has kind of allowed me to bridge that gap. Yeah. Um, it's been, I've loved it. It's been really fun. <laughs> I'll say like, I haven't um, ventured out to do the the second Instagram, but I will say um, a girl that interned with me years ago who is still now a part of my team because she is a badass, like when it comes to all the grid stuff. And because I didn't understand that a long time ago. And um, she's like, Angela, people think you're a robot because you, everything like has to be so perfect. I'm like, but I sell perfection. Like that's why clients hire me. And she's like, but you're so not a robot. She's like, you're a real person. She's like, you're one of the realest people that I've ever met in this industry because you don't give a shit what people think. Like you will just tell them, but you're very Southern and very sweet about it. (laughs) And so bless your heart. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Bless your heart. And so, um, she's like, so on your Insta stories, I'm like, it's so stupid. I'm not doing that. It's like Snapchat. Like that shit disappears. Like, what's the point? And like, that was like, so two years ago. And then she's like, well, just try it. She's like, just at night, you know, when you're like helping your niece study and you're like doing stupid stuff with your dogs, the stuff that like the whole team sees and thinks it's funny. Um, when you're just being you, she's like, share that. And I'm like, really? And as soon as I started to be like, I mean, I'll be like in my robe with no makeup and my hair's on my head, which I'm in my robe right now. And to be honest, <laughs> it's like, I don't get dressed up with hair and makeup every day. And, um, but the engagement on the business side really went up after yeah. I started to, you know, just open up and show people like, I am not perfect. Now I will make sure that our events are as perfect as they can be. And a lot of times at every single event, no matter how long you've been doing this, there is still shit catching on fire. Um, But my goal is to never let the client know. And go on Insta story because the shit disappears in 24 hours. And typically, you know, my couples are partied out, drunk, like they're at their brunches, so they're not going to see it anyway. But I'm like, (laughs) so this is what happened. Um, Yeah, this is real life. And this, I had one girl one time, she's like, why didn't you Facebook love my wedding? And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, uh, there truly was a fire, like a real fire in the kitchen. And I'm like, we'll talk about that when you get back from your honeymoon. Like you, you should enjoy your honeymoon. Like I don't do this for social media, (laughs) but, um, but yeah, we have those, those clients that, um, they want to be inspiring other couples, you know, which, which is great. But again, it's like, you, you got to just get on the same page with people. Um, so tell our listeners, Brittany, where can they find out more about you? Yeah. So you can go to loveincmag.com and uh, also you can follow us on all social platforms at loveincmag. And um, I would actually like, I would love to also offer your listeners an exclusive discount to our mm-hmm. Equality Minded Vendor Guide. Um, so if you go to Love Inc. Mag, you can see our um, 
our vendor guide on the site and apply to be a love lister, which is, we call it it's the loving's love list and we call them love listers. Um, it's just, it's a community of equality minded uh, wedding pros all around the country. And um, I would love to offer a 20% discount to Weddings Unveiled listeners. Hey. Um, so go to our site and find the, you know, click on the link to, to apply to be a love lister and um, put in the discount code Weddings Unveiled. Yay. Thank you so much. That yeah. is awesome. That is really, again, like it's so amazing that couples can go and look at vendors and they don't have to ask those silly questions like, do you do this and do you do that? It's like you've already vetted them and they're pre-qualified. Exactly. That's awesome. So thank you so much. Thank so guys, yeah, make sure that you um, jot down that discount code so that you can get the exclusive rate on the vendor guide if you want to be part of this. And to check out more, be sure to go to loveincmag.com and check out Brittany's stuff. You have so much beautiful content on here. It's so awesome. It's very inspiring. I love it. So thank you so much for being here, Brittany. Thank you so much. This is so fun. Awesome. Well, everybody out there, thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Have a great day. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list, and if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.